We are the worst team in the NFL, man. The Atlanta Falcons, we can't beat. 0-3, <laughs> of course. Uh, I told y'all. Any type of hopes and aspirations you have for this team is down the drain once you're 0-3. I don't care what anybody says. Worst team in the NFL. Couldn't even score on a Falcons defense that was one of the worst in the NFL. A red zone defense that allowed seven touchdowns went in the end zone and we could only get one. Like, there's so many things wrong here. Like, definition of a bad team. All right? Where coaches are terrible and the players are terrible and mistakes just seem to happen out of nowhere. Bad teams find ways to lose. Bad teams find bad ways to lose. What can go wrong, will go wrong. That saying that goes for the Dallas Cowboys? No, 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 no. That's for us now. We're like the, we're the Cleveland Browns of the 2000s. From Joe Judge, who I don't know why certain Giants fans love to defend him so much. I was going back and forth with a guy on Twitter who just doesn't want to give Joe Judge any blame. From Joe Judge... To Jason Garrett, who proved to me that last week was an aberration, just like week five of Dallas last year, where it seems like he has one good game where he calls a good game plan and calls some good plays, and then it just goes away the next week. To Patrick Graham, because his players can't tackle, that's on him. Uh, his def This was the best defensive performance of the season. You know what I'm saying? We held the Falcons to 17 points. We had three sacks, but his, his players can't tackle and they can't catch. Drop pick by Dory Jackson. To the special teams, Thomas McGahee, you're not getting left off. A lot of people don't even know who he is. But our special teams continue to be subpar and honestly kind of bad considering the amount of stock and players that we put into it. You know what I'm saying? And then now speaking of players, to the players themselves. Everybody on this team, except for like Daniel Jones and Aziz Ozerlari, are performing terribly. And they, and they both still have their mistakes. Like, Daniel had another really good game. No turnovers. That's all you could ask for. But no touchdowns. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But he's still missing guys that are kind of open. Uh, but once again, great game. He, he kind of put the team on his back. Like, he, the, all three weeks, he's been the, the only reason the offense is, like, even putting up points. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not about to rag on him. But I will say, yeah, he has his mistakes here and there where he misses a wide open guy. Or he's not passing to the right dude. Or there's a bad pass that causes us to punt the ball. But for the most part, he's the only reason the offense is even running. Aziz Ojolari, third game, third sack. And it was a sack strip fumble. He's still on pace to have 17 sacks. We make that joke. But he continues to look good in this defense like I, I, like I expected he would. However, he still also just completely disappears. And But once again, because he's the only guy that's actually shown up and he's a rookie, I'm not about to get on him for that. You know what I'm saying? Other than those two guys, the entirety... Oh, I'm going to add in a third one, Graham Gano. Respect to Graham Gano. Continues to be flawless. Even though our coaching staff can't trust him for some reason. I think we were 54 yards out on one of those many times we played conservative and we didn't go for it on fourth down. We were like 54 yards out. And even if you didn't go for it, you should at least send Gano out there and let him kick the ball. Justin Tucker just won the game on a 66-yard field goal. Now, I'm, I'm not saying Graham Gano is going to do that, but we were like around 50 to 54 yards out. And he can make that. He can make that, but Judge didn't want to make the call. He wants to pump back. And once again, as it got later and later in the game, yes, I understand the need slash want to punt because you don't want to like be to have a turnover on downs in, uh, you know what I'm saying, at, at the point of field that you are that late in the game. However, just like last week where I said there was times in the first quarter where we should have gone for it. There were times in the first quarter where we should have gone for it here and it came back to bite us. Uh, time management and, and timeout management and challenges. He still sucks at those. There's no excuse for that. He's still terrible when it comes to managing his time. Came back to bite us. Jason Garrett. I already, I already talked about Jason Garrett. He seems to revert back to his week one self. Which is, to be honest with you, is not a complete surprise to me. Because I, you all know me, I wanted Jason Garrett gone for a while. And I was thinking in my head, is the Washington game an aberration? Is it an outlier? It appears to be so. But then on top of all that, on top of our players being bad, you know what I'm saying? Because the players are trash. They can't tackle. Dory Jackson can't catch a pick. Why are we paying you that much money? There was nobody around you and you, you fumbled the, the pick. Just like how Darius Slayton fumbled the bag last week. It's a drop pass last week. It's a drop pick this week. On top of all that, we got injuries. We got a whole bunch of injuries. 
We were out of basically all of our starting wide receivers because Kenny Galladay was very clearly on a pitch count. And Colin Johnson was our best receiver in this game. Evan Ingram, once forced back to being the number one target because when all the receivers went out, he's obviously the best guy we have on the field. Fumbles, slash drops, slash whatever you want to do. He becomes Evan Ingram again. I've Ken, Kadarius Tony is out there. We had a Kadarius Tony siding. He, he got the ball twice. However, it seemed that even in a situation where literally all of our starting wide receivers are out, Jason Garrett doesn't use him. He doesn't game plan for him. He doesn't give him any, like, just doesn't basically have him involved as much as he should be because he should be the next guy up. And then Daniel Jones also overlooks him a little bit. Saw a couple of times Tony was down the bottom screen. Be his guy. Jones is, doesn't pass it to him. I'm not sure if, you know, he just didn't read him in his progressions or if, you know, he trusts another guy more. But he should have been involved more regardless. That's on Jason Garrett and, and on Daniel Jones. Colin Johnson had a nice game. I, I think I already mentioned him. Looked very good. Very, very good. He, he was the only guy DJ seemed to trust in the second half as well, which I don't blame him. You know what I'm saying? Um, what else is there to say? Oh, yeah, the injuries. It reminds me of 2017. I think I've said this in all of my reaction videos. This season reminds me so much of 2017. And now we have a week three game where we have a lot of injuries to our wide receiving core. Just like the Chargers, I'm like 99% sure in 2017, the Chargers was a week three game where all of our receivers got injured. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And this is this blame goes on everybody. We're a bad team. There's not one person to blame. But there's also nobody is blameless. You got to put some on Joe John and put some on his head and Patrick Graham. What have these guys done for some fans to defend them the way they do? You got to put some on Jason Garrett because he's still calling curl routes every single play, it seems like. You got to put some on Saquon Barkley because even though he's not healthy and now it's on the coaching staff, you're putting him out there. It's very clear that he's not healthy. The, the dude makes a spin move. He does a juke and then he collapses. He's not ready. Maybe he will never be the same again. I don't know, but he shouldn't be out there. He's hurting himself and the team. Got to put blame on the offensive line. Even though they did okay at best in pass protection, they continue to be horrendous in run blocking. You got to put it on the defense, who even though they had their best game of the season, they were still trash. This is still a terrible defense. Blake Martinez goes down. I'll be honest, I'm kind of surprised that Reggie Ragland did as good as he did when he filled in. But for the most part, that's more on Atlanta than it is on us. They didn't start using Kyle Pitts until the fourth quarter. Our cornerbacks, going back to Adoree, can't seem to make a, a catch. Same thing with our, our, even our safeties aren't playing that good. Logan Ryan has been playing very well up until this game. He had a bad game this game, but Xavier McKinney kind of made up for it. Xavier McKinney had a good game. We still can't get any pressure. This defense, once again, is terrible. Yeah, we had three sacks, but Matt Ryan, for 99% of the game, was sitting fine. He's getting no pressure. You know what I'm saying? It's, don't let the stats mislead you now just because we got three sacks. We didn't get any pressure on the quarterback today. We're the worst team in the league. Bad teams make bad decisions. Bad teams make bad mistakes. Bad things happen to bad teams. It seems like the Giants were battling the Falcons, the refs, and themselves this game. That's just what happens with bad teams. And that's what we are. I don't really got any other thoughts to say. 0-1-3. This is what we get Eli on his jersey retirement day, man. That's it for now. I'm out. Put your thoughts down below. I ain't got nothing else to say. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.